How's it going, everybody? It's your Hammer and Airsaw Smith here with a bunch of updates. Yay! Um, so as you see here, is an envelope. Uh, last week, I said I was expecting, uh, excuse me, expecting some parts, and I didn't say what for. Or I believe I didn't say what for. Sometimes what happens is you take so many retakes of videos sometimes that you forget what you actually said in the final cut because let's be honest I'm going to sit there and watch my own videos over and over and over again anyways so here's the envelope and what was inside this little manual thing or what I'm not even sure what you would call this some sort of flyer from evike.com Ooh, it's got a coupon in it. That's pretty cool. Ooh, this coupon's good until December. Ooh. Just a bunch of sponsors and everything like that. Th this stuff in here is actually pretty uh, important, but I'm not going to go over it right now because it's not important for video purposes. But, anyways. And while I'm talking about Evike, um, they finally received my MP9, my little nightmare, and they approved me for an exchange or something of equal value. I picked the gun already. I got the email this morning, and I picked it immediately. I, got, I just knew what I wanted. I just knew. The thing I wanted was $10 cheaper, so they may give me the... The difference with the amount left over as a store credit. So, I don't know exactly what's going on right now because I've been busy for the last hour, but it's looking pretty good so far. Uh, definitely something utilitarian uh, that looks very combat battle ready. It's gonna be freaking sweet. It's not gonna be anything you guys have never seen before. I'm not gonna say that. I think that. The M92F is definitely something more rare um, than this utilitarian pistol I'm talking about. But anyways, what was in the envelope? Parts, of course. For the Kimber Ultra Carry 2. New mag catch. New thumb safety. Wait. Oh wait, this is, this is safe. There's no magazine in here. Okay. But anyways. Ambi. And it works. Gosh damn! What is the world coming to? Well, this is what I actually spent an hour doing. Uh, I spent an hour trying to fit this Ambi Thumb Safety to the Kimber Ultra Carry 2. Now let me uh, kind of just prop her up for a minute as I speak. See something to look at other than my uh, Native American looking ass. But anyways, um... It's kind of warm in here. Hold on. All right. So, my was this frame on this uh, this pistol is a Generation One WE single stack M1911A1 government model frame. Say that ten times fast. Yeah, ridiculous. But that's what it is. Um, it's from way back. Obviously, it's Generation One. Um. And the th Ambi Thumb Safety Alert was for a WE High Kappa series. Now, obviously, if you, you know, you use your head, the Ambi Thumb Safety for the High Kappa series is probably going to be wider than the uh, single stack WE frame, which is somewhat true. 
I've done research. I went to very reliable sources. Dave all told me, or I've even read that it should work no problem. The only thing is, you might have to cut out a notch on the right side grip panel so the arm on the right side uh, thumb safety you know, for lefties um, should be able to slide underneath the grip panel and it also helps like the grip panel also helps the arm from falling out because it doesn't fit 100% snug all the time it just happens that way turns out well I had to do quite a bit of fitting very much like the KJ Works AMV thumb safety I had. But I believe this actually works. I'm not blaming KJ Works, of course. I mean, they're different brands. Why would I sit here and bash KJ Works for their parts not being compatible with WE? That would just be stupid. I'm very reasonable, if you haven't noticed by now. So I was just like, oh man. I, 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 got, I, like, I took the parts out, I was excited. I wanted to go put the MV thumb safety in, and it wouldn't go down. Very similar, again, to the KJ Works thing. So I did pretty much what I did with the KJ Works um, thumb safety. So if you go back, I would like to explain it, but it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to be hard to explain about actually disassembling the gun and everything like that. And after the crap that the KJ Works Thumb Safety has put me through, I really don't want to dig it out right now. Um, not lazy, just don't want to put up with it right now. Just don't want to look at it right now. I don't have a big problem with it, and I'm very thankful that it was given to me. But it just, I just don't want to see it at this moment. Um, so you can refer to the playlist for the Kimber Ultra Carry 2 stainless. Um, in one of those videos, probably part three or so, I'm not sure how many parts were in it, but if you just watch them, just skim through them, you'll see. You'll see from the beginning, I, I, the beginning of one of those videos, I should be talking about the thumb safeties and how I went about doing it. I apologize for not going about it right now, but I don't want to really elaborate into that, but I have a video up on it, and I know for a fact it's there, and it's easy to get to. But anyways, so finally, I got it down to where it actually functions. See, it's up. It's good. It's a weird angle. I'm gonna have to do it with this finger. See how it flips up? It flips up pretty easily, actually. Flip it up. Put it down. Okay. Now, I did cut out the notch on the grip panel, but it turns out the arm isn't long enough. You'll see there's a black flat. Right there. There's a black flat that looks kind of like, like nylon or something like that. That's my own design. I actually came up with that just now, literally, like just like phew, Einstein that shit. Um, my problem was the arm was too too short to fit underneath the grip panel, so I was like, oh, man, now what am I gonna do? I'm like back to square one, like how I was with the KJ Works thing. And back in one of those videos, I explained how I wanted to kind of like extend. Well, that one. That grip safety didn't have an arm on it. That one I had to kind of build a new arm, but that just didn't end up happening correctly without it working correctly. Um, with it working correctly, whatever. It just didn't work. Alright? There. And But this one has an arm. So, I was like, well now if it, doesn't, if it isn't long enough to fit underneath that grip panel, now what I'm going to do? It didn't fall out very easily like the KJ Works one did. But still, it was starting to find its way out a little bit. So I figured, well, I already had the notch cut out for the grip panel. So I was like, well, all I really need to do is just find a way to kind of hood, like make like a, a cowl to kind of just lightly hug over the arm, like lightly embrace the arm without 
uh, intruding on it. And that's what I've done there. See? That's what I've done there, and it won't it, it won't fall out. It won't. And if it does get locked a little loose, it will it won't get lost because no matter what, this flap is always going to be here, and it won't push all the way out because this grip safety isn't heavy enough to push that all the way out. Another thing I did, I'll get to how I made the flap in a second. The other thing I did to ensure that this grip safety was going to stay in right was I put a little bit of Loctite. Yes. Loctite can act like a filler. It's not all just about like screws and stuff. You can put them in pins and whatnot as well. So just put like a little dab of Loctite on this end. Uh, well, this panel, this grip safety side, but the pin itself that actually interlocks with this one's pin. If you get my drift. Have you ever handled uh, an Ambi? Uh, thumb safety, you know what I'm talking about. They kind of join by the pin. Well, this side's pin, not this side's. I put a little bit, because that's the side that joins actually inside of this one's pin. They kind of cuff. And, um, in my opinion, looking at it, it was a better design than the KJ Works one. But that's just my opinion. It's like a triangular, like, little notch it's in this side. And the other side is a triangular pin. So they kind of just lock together with the triangle or whatever, and they fit kind of tight. But now I have the Loctite in there, it creates kind of a seal. Uh, it's not going to be like glue, but it's it's going to fill up any space, like any gaps that are in between the pins as they fit. If I made any sense of that whatsoever. And now it works just fine. Thank goodness. I might leave the, th the thumb safety for now and the grip... I mean, uh, the thumb safety in the uh, Mag Hatch black. Because the slide is a dark gunmetal gray kind of black. And there are Kimber carry guns that are this size, an officer size model, that look very much like this. Actually, there's one called the Eclipse, which, from what I remember, looks like this. Um, well, very similar, anyways. But I'm still just going to call it an Ultra Kimber carry. Because that's what I originally intended it to be. I mean, colorations shouldn't change the whole model name. Coloration is just coloration. It is what it is. Like, if you take a 1911, a standard 1911, and then you make it nickel-plated, I mean, you shouldn't have to call it a nickel-plated 1911. It's just, it's just a 1911. If you want to state that it's nickel-plated, go on ahead. Just like if I want to call this an ultra carry. And I want to call it a, a two-tone ultra carry. I'm, I can, but I don't have to. Um, but, point is, it all works. It all works. And, to show that the mag catch and everything, everything functions. Where did I put this? Here we go. It's magazine. safety off. Ooh, look at the... I don't know if you guys can see that, but the gas is really dispersing nicely. This gun is quite snappy. It's up there with the M&P9. But I don't want to waste too much gas, and I might decide to smoke a cigar in here later. I don't want to blow up. How great would that be? Oh, the Hammer and Airsoft Smith finally got his old carry working fine again, and then he blew up. But there's that. This gun is looking sharp. Um, there she is. Oh, the flap. I almost left you guys hanging on that. Good thing uh, Possessed the Rage just reminded me. Thanks, Possessed the Rage. You know, it would be a shame, it would be a crying shame if you decide to not make videos anymore. That's a different story. Everyone's quitting YouTube. That's all I'm going to say about that. But, um... The, 
the flap. The flap is actually, now a lot of you snooty people, and I'm going to say this flat, a lot of you snooty people are going to look at this and be like, oh, that's just ghetto. That's, that's just lame, blah, 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 blah. For you, like, actual airsoft smith type people, like, Lazouche Custom Shop, and maybe, maybe Knuckles, you might think this is pretty, uh, pretty cool. This, hold on, these groups, screws are pissing me off. They need to be tighter than this. I feel like they're kind of loose. I just put them on before the video. Ah, they're a little loose still, but they'll be fine. But I think Lazouche would think this is clever anyway. That flap is actually Gorilla Tape. What I did, I'm going to end up taking the screw off anyway, I mean, uh, the screws out anyway. What I did, because I actually want to show this, it's really easy to show. I'll worry about tightening the screws after the video. Now if you look here, that's just what the thumb city looks like without the grip. I also, before I forget, I also, that pin, that sear pin with the lighting with this damn gun is too blingy. There you go. That sear pin right there protrudes slightly. I actually had to file that down so it's flush, so it doesn't get in the way of that arm. But here you go, how I made this flap. There's the flap. To me, it actually looks kind of cool because it looks like it's actually integrated into... Oh, wait, I kind of did integrate it into there. It's Gorilla Duct Tape. What I did was just take a strip and I folded it in half uneven. Like, say, this is the whole strip. Say it's straight. This is the sticky side. Sticky! And this is the regular textured side. All I did was put it like that. So that way, this sticky side that's left over, and there's no sticky side the rest of the way, is over in the inside, and I cut around here so nothing interferes with that uh, grip screw bushing here. And then this was hanging off a little bit, but there was no sticky sides, as I just explained. And then I just fitted it, and then I cut around to where I felt was a a good amount of flap to have just kind of chill there. Now as you see, the flap kind of hangs inward. So it kind of cuffs around the arm of the grip safety. If you think that's ghetto, I really don't give a shit. But I, obviously, it's, I think it's clever because it came out exactly the way I needed to. I didn't have to do an extra work. I did, and like I said, I did have to cut out that notch because I thought the arm, like I already had the notch cut out before when I originally had the AMV thumb safety because I thought I was going to make an arm that would hang off of it, the KJ Works one. So actually that ended up working in my favor because that notch was already there. So that it was just enough notch so that the tape could just be free without interfering with anything whatsoever ever but it's it's tight enough to where it's not going to just get unsticky and just fall off or something like that so that's that's tighter now it's better now and it, it has a very positive flip to it like on this side it's you know, kind of noticeable and on the other side you feel it more than you hear in my opinion but then again, it's more something you have to see. And just from working it, there isn't a gap between the safety and the frame. So it's not going to get loose and fall out, which is really what I was hoping for. And if I'm like using it or whatever, and I notice that it's starting to get a little loose, my right finger's hanging over it, so I just go, and it pushes in. It's not a big deal ever. I don't see it to be like a cop out or nothing like that. I think it was actually a pretty good idea and I like it. If you want to use it, or if you have a project that's similar, if you want to build one of these or something like it, or you're just having a hard time fitting a uh, Ambi thumb safety to a Knights and Eleven, and you want to use that idea, go right ahead. Uh, I fully think 
it's a great idea because it works. At the end of the day, if it works, that's what it's supposed to do. Now we're going to move on to something else, uh, a few updates. There's nothing new really going on with the M92F Samurai Edge M9. Uh, I haven't fired it all week. Very busy, hectic week this week. Um, I'm usually very busy, but lately it was pretty damn hectic, so I haven't really had the time to uh, really shoot this girl. But she's doing very good. Still no failures, still no disappointments. Uh, this is wearing a little bit just for me, like handling the gun. I've still been handling it and whatnot. You can see that there's some black coming through. That's fine, you know, whatever. Um, and then, what else we got going on here? Well, I said I was going to do it, and I did it. I aged her again. Good old Doris, 1918, 81, aged again. Now, this aging process is so cool, in my opinion, because you just never know what the outcome is going to be. You never know what kind of like a little pattern is going to show up in it. You never know if it's going to be dull or if it's going to have a semi-gloss, like a bluing, or you don't ever really know how dark it's going to be. I left all these, all the parts that I aged are the grip safety, the thumb safety, slide, and frame. I put them all into this plastic bin saturated them all evenly with a decent amount of the cheap oven cleaner. Uh, it's like a yellow label. It's just simply called oven cleaner. It's from the dollar store. The dollar store stuff works better than like Easy Off and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, and somehow again, the slide got darker than the frame. But the grip safety is almost as dark as the slide. It's darker than the frame. The thumb safety is in between. And you can see there's like a little bit of a pattern going on in the slide. Like the last one, it, it looked like, excuse me, it looked like it, was, it had rust building up underneath. This one looks like it's got kind of like a woodland camo. You know, like some people put uh, the, the face paint on like in stripes. It's black stripes that go all the way across their face. That's kind of like what it reminds me of that's on the slide. See, it kind of goes on there and there. But also, it came out kind of glossy-ish, too. Like, the bluing didn't dull. And for the gun being two-toned looking, but not too far off from between, like the them just simply being two different colors, um, them meaning the slide and frame, that kind of works out for me because I did build this around a combination like a hybrid between a 1918 and a 1911 A1. Obviously the A1 uh, would be the frame between the two and the slide would be the 1918. And uh, back then the 1918s when they first made them they were blued, like very beautifully blued. Um, but later on when they made the A1, they didn't have the time to do that anymore. They needed to mass produce this thing, so they kind of just gave it like a black oxide, some more parkerized. So obviously over the years, like say this gun was fitted around the same time and used throughout years and whatnot, and aged. I think it was like a real steel, is what I'm saying. And um, this is kind of like what I think what it would look like. Like the, the blue slide would look this grayish, dull, yet somewhat glossy look to it. And the frame will look greenish blue and kind of dull. Now if you watch Hickok 45's videos, he's got a legitimate vintage 1911 A1 that was actually used in World War II. And you can see there's a resemblance between that gun, even though it's real steel, and this airsoft gun. And you'll see what I'm saying as far as like how the color has changed, how it used to be blackish or black, just black or gray, and it turned into like a greenish blue gray. It's like this weird, bizarre color only a vintage, a vintage 19, a vintage, vintage 1911 can have. And this is why I like aging these guns. Uh, well, this one specifically. Again, you like never know how things are gonna come out. That just came out like that. It looks like it's just worn there. 
Look how dark the dust cover got. I mean, uh, the chin cut. Or a slide apron. That's what that's called. So look at that. That that came like that on on its own. Like, that happened on its own. I did not do that. I don't even know how to tell you how you would even do that. It just happened that way. And I sprayed everything evenly. And you can see, like, there's some wear-looking marks under here. It's just very uneven, but it doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't look like crap. But this is the way I wanted it again. I wanted it to look very vintage. Like it was actually used and it would have a story to tell. And it functions. See? So... There's that. So that's what's going on, really, as far as my airsoft stuff goes. Um, but like I said, um, maybe in like a week or so, I should be having yet another new one here. And that would be the replacement of the MP9. It's something I'm very familiar with. And it's utilitarian. And it's actually still, at the same time, very different from the rest of my airsoft pistols. Very different. Not, like, extremely, but anyways. Alright. I'll see you ladies and gentlemen later. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for spending a half hour of your time watching one of my videos when you could have been watching, like, Family Guy or something. See you guys later.